Once it had that, that the government acted on it as swiftly as possible, of course I know the timing is frustrating, but I want to give people a sense of the scale of what we're grappling with here. There are around 22,000 schools in England, and the important thing to know is we expect that 95% of those schools won't be impacted by this. Around 50 schools have already been mitigated, another 100 are in the process of being so, and uh, you know, our expectation is, is in a matter of weeks, the bulk of the remaining schools that will have this issue will be identified as well. Also important context to know that in many cases, this could be limited to a, a single classroom, for example, um, so people should have a sense of the scale of what might be happening as well. The former permanent secretary of the Department for Education um, has said this morning that when they wanted to put more money into repairing schools, you as Chancellor didn't allow that to go ahead and in fact cut that budget. Are you to blame for what's happening now? And do you want to apologise to parents and pupils? No, I think that is completely and utterly wrong. Actually, one of the first things I did as Chancellor in my first spending review in 2020 was to announce a new 10-year school rebuilding programme for 500 schools. Now, that equates to about 50 schools a year that will be refurbished or rebuilt. And if you look at what we've been doing over the previous decade, that's completely in line with what we've always done, about 50 or so schools a year refurbished or rebuilt. That's what I announced as Chancellor in my first spending review. On top of that, I also invested £5 billion to help our kids catch up with lost learning from COVID, the Education Recovery Programme. I think you'll remember at the time, that was rightly a priority of the country to help our kids who've been disrupted by COVID with extra tutoring, for example, to help them catch up. And that cost £5 billion, which I invested in as Chancellor. But the former Permanent Secretary said 50 schools a year, yes. They asked, they had funding initially for 100. They thought the total number that needed to be done per year was 300 to 400. Prime Minister, you talk a lot about trade-offs, but isn't this simply a trade-off that if you choose to save money in this area and don't put as much money into repairing schools as senior officials ask, then you run the risk of them having to shut down because of a risk of them falling down? Well, if you look at what we've been doing over the past decade, we've been rebuilding or refurbishing about 50 schools a year. As Chancellor, I announced a new 10-year programme to refurbish, uh, rebuild 500 schools over the decade. So completely in line with what historically we've done in this country. On top of that, I announced record funding for schools, not just to help catch up our children with lost learning, £5 billion. It was an enormous amount invested in the largest ever tutoring programme that this country has seen. That was seen rightly at the time as the priority. Our kids' learning had been hugely disrupted by COVID. It was important that we helped them catch up, particularly the most disadvantaged pupils were the ones that were impacted the most. So I thought it was right also to invest in that, as alongside just increasing the day-to-day -day schools budget back to the record levels uh, that we had seen previously. So taking together very strong investment in schools, and, and now we're getting on with mitigating the issues that we're seeing today uh, in a way that will help children quickly get back into the classroom. And just finally on those mitigations, can you promise that schools will get all the money they need to fund things like transport to new classrooms um, or other costs to make sure that in the schools that are impacted, kids can go on learning in person and we won't have a return to remote learning that we saw during the COVID pandemic. Yeah, Chancellor's been crystal clear that schools will be given extra money for these mitigations. It won't come from their existing school budget. Is that more money from the Treasury or that from the wouldn't be right. There will, there will be extra money to the school, so the school budget won't be impacted by this. They will be given the extra money to deal with the mitigations. And again, just for context, you know, our expectation is 95% of schools it won't be impacted by this. And in the 50 or so schools that have already been mitigated, what we've seen is in the majority of cases, children continue to go to school, they're taught elsewhere on the school estate, and for those that do have to be home,